analyzing arguments and recognizing inferences and fallacies in media. In this chapter, we will learn about the art of argumentation and persuasion. This includes the analysis and evaluation of arguments, the recognition of various ways of communication and tactics of persuasion, as well as logical fallacies in media arguments. The ancient roots of the art of persuasion. While the purpose of media may be entertainment, information, explanation or profit, its main goal is to persuade the target audience to make a specific choice, e.g. to consume one product instead of another, to support an idea or to change opinion about a public issue. It is not easy, though, to persuade someone to change preferences, attitudes, ideas or behaviours without presenting either a real threat or a real benefit. People are afraid of radical change and do not like to be forced to do something or to believe in something. But they might believe that they choose out of their free will. Belief in free will is pervasive in human social life and rational choice is a vital form of free will. So they must think that they have made a choice by themselves. Thus, an argument is needed to encourage them to agree that the persuader's point of view is a matter of common sense. This is the most popular persuasive communication technique used by the media. The art of persuasion is not a new one and was definitely not invented by the media, as its roots stem from the ancient Greek philosophers called sophists and their study of rhetoric. According to them, the truth was not only unimportant, but it was something in the eyes of the beholder. Recognizing arguments. Media uses verbal and visual arguments in order to persuade us. Media literacy through critical thinking starts from recognizing what an argument is and what it is not, as well as evaluating its strength. As explained, an argument consists of one or more statements that are used to provide support for a conclusion. The statements that provide the support for a conclusion are called the reasons or premises of the argument. For example, research has shown that people who exercise two hours per week are less likely to suffer from heart disease and obesity than people who do not exercise. That's the premise. So we must exercise at least twice a week. The conclusion. Not everything we see, hear or read is an argument. It may be a preference, a, an opinion or a fact. Can we distinguish statements that consist of arguments from those that do not? The statement, I like vegetables more than meat is a preference statement and not an argument, as no reasons are given for this preference. The statement, we visited Athens twice this year, is neither a preference nor an argument, but it is a fact. It may seem simple to find out whether there is a premise, a reason, and a conclusion, but it might be more difficult than it seems. The first step is to recognize the strength of an argument. Not all arguments are sound. Furthermore, real life arguments may be sound only to some degree. Sound arguments usually meet, to some degree, the three following criteria. Firstly, the premises are true or acceptable. That is, it is reasonable enough to believe it. So a part of analyzing an argument is to decide about the acceptability of the premises based on common sense knowledge or expert testimonies. For example, it is easy to recognize true or false premises such as children are older than their parents or the spider is a mammal. But how acceptable is the claim the plastic material X is a dangerous one, especially for young children. 
Well, we need to read more about it or ask for expert opinion in order to decide. Secondly, the premise must be related to the conclusion and provide sufficient support for that conclusion. However, determining the relevance between the premises and the conclusion is not always easy, especially when it comes to complex issues such as ethics, health, justice or politics. In fact, it may be rather tricky to determine relatedness in some cases. For example, it may be easy to say that in the argument, we must exercise almost every day because athletes exercise every day, the premise is related to the conclusion only if we are athletes. Otherwise, it's not relevant to the conclusion. But is a candidate's previous alcohol problem relevant to their ability to govern a country? Not every premise provides sufficient support to the conclusion. John complains every day about the conditions of his work, so John is going to leave his work, which is a very weak argument. But if we say, John complains every day about the conditions of his work, yesterday he visited a career counsellor and is looking for job advertisements on the internet, so John is going to leave his work. The two premises, a weak and a strong one, give sufficient support to the conclusion. To a large extent, our judgments about the strength of an argument depend on our previous knowledge or expertise about the subject, our personal values and ethics, our prejudices, and generally on the way we usually make judgments. Thirdly, have missing components been considered? The principal aim of the argument is to persuade the target audience that a conclusion is true or probably true. Most of the time, only the pros of the product, the candidate or the idea are presented. So this is only a half-truth. The critical question here is, what is left out? What is missing? Are there any counter-arguments? Being an advocate for the other side is the only way to find out if the missing information is important and may change your decision. Argumentation in social media is a good example of the need for critical thinking to analyse the quality of arguments. Social media is a world of disagreements about evidence, whether we accept facts as true or not, and of expressing opinion, what we believe or prefer. People do not only express their opinion all the time, but they sometimes try to justify their opinion by providing various reasons. However, different amounts of certainty are needed when we look for evidence or opinion about health issues compared to when we buy products. Even when looking for reviews in order to decide whether a coffee machine is good enough to be bought, we have to separate reasons about facts from emotional responses and preferences. Inferring implied information from the context is needed in most cases. Hence, critical thinking is very important in understanding how various statements are justified and what is the core or the source of disagreement. Media usually uses fallacies to persuade us to do something or to believe in something. Fallacies are arguments which seem to be valid but are not. They are weak arguments appearing to be okay arguments. They are not necessarily wrong, but the arguer usually does not provide either enough or the right kind of evidence to support their conclusion. Do we oppose an idea because we do not like the person who supports it? This is the idea behind the use of ad hominem fallacy, meaning to attack the opponent's opinion by presenting them as unreliable or stupid in political advertisements. A candidate's proposal about national defence issues should be rejected because he didn't do his military service. He might have a brilliant proposal 
but the aim here is to distract our focus from the proposal per se. Do we choose to buy a product because we want to be similar to the person we admire? Who uses the product? This is the idea behind the testimonials fallacy, or appeals to authority. Respected politicians or movie stars endorse a belief or advertise a product that is not related to their job or expertise. Is it more likely we would buy a particular espresso coffee because it happens to be the one George Clooney prefers? Most of the fallacies appeal to our emotions and not to our logic. Advertisements use appeals to emotion as a strategy to persuade people to consume a product or endorse an idea or take a stand against a social issue. Buying home insurance is more likely if we feel sad after seeing a video where people have lost their homes after an earthquake. Young people enjoy life and have fun when they are drinking a particular brand of beer with friends. Emotions are powerful action forces and advertisements direct our actions via triggering emotions. In conclusion, we have learned that recognizing the strength of arguments and being aware of the use of fallacies and tactics of persuasion in media is important. The acceptance of an argument is a product of reasoning or rationalizing, that is, select and attend information that favors a preferred conclusion. Critical thinking can help us decide who to believe and what to believe. We can start by asking the right questions about the source of information in an argument, e.g. is it given by an expert, is it personal gain or is it for profit? It can also help us not to confuse the truth and acceptability of a conclusion with the soundness of an argument. True conclusions may not be supported by the given reasons. Finally, it can help us analyze the quality of reasons and counter reasons, and most importantly, to recognize and avoid media propaganda that appeals to emotions.